Hello, welcome back. So this episode we're going to try and make our uh, our menu systems work a little bit. We're going to lay the foundation for how the menus will work. And that is we're going to lay out the foundation for how they get spawned and maybe despawned depending on how far we get. So this is our mock-up and uh, we're going to clean it up a little bit. The biggest problem with this mock-up is that these these objects in here are just kind of floating around and we actually need to contain them within another game object. In this case we're going to call this a um, battle status indicator. And we're going to make it like this and we're going to drag it up. Come on. There we are. Click. And we're going to bring this in. Click. And we're going to rearrange these by sticking them inside of the battle status indicator. Uh, now there are a couple of pieces that aren't quite right, and that would be the image is a little bit too low. So we'll just move that image up a touch. There we go. And that should do. And that's not too bad. Uh, and what we're going to do now is modify these sliders a little bit. These are just uh, intermediaries. They're not, I'm sorry, not intermediaries, temporary. They're just temporary. But we don't want the player to be able to drag those sliders, so we'll just delete the handles off of them. Uh, we'll be replacing these entirely later on, so don't worry about exactly what that means. Uh, let's go ahead and rename this stuff. So we've got a portrait. And we've got HP. And we've got a name. And we've got MP. No problems. And then we can drag this battle status indicator down into our prefab system. And now whenever we need one, we can just drop it into our act into our party stack. There is a problem left over here, and it's that these are in the wrong spot. They're in the middle, and we need them to be at the top, just so that our math is easier. Now when we want to specify the position of this particular object, we can specify it relative to the top rather than relative to the middle, which isn't such a great, you know, idea. That's odd. I'm wondering why it doesn't have any apply save option. Hmm. This is super weird. I've never seen Oh, cuz we're in play mode. I'm an idiot. There we are. Now we can modify the uh, exact position of this battle status indicator. I actually changed my whole visual so that it was blatantly obvious that I'm in play mode, and I still forget. There we go. So, um, although I just deleted the battle status indicator, I'm going to put it back in here. And we need to create some scripts. So this is going to be a design where the data is separated from the display. And that's not always the best option, but it's generally a pretty reliable option. Uh, and so that's what we're going to go with. So first we're going to need the data half. The data half would be uh, the character. But we want it to also cover monsters. Anything that has HP, maybe MP, and you know can be lit on fire should count. So we'll call these battle units. Now I've created an empty uh, object, which I could delete for you, but it's just, I'll delete it, why not? Create an empty game object and then stick it somewhere where it won't get noticed by the camera, like over here somewhere, where it, just in case we decide to do more visuals with it. And then we'll just drop the battle unit onto it, here it is, uh, and we will rename it the name of our hero, and hero, there it is open this up in our editor of choice. Our editor of choice which was open with some other stuff but it didn't crash today. Yay! Perfect. We are also going to need public battle... Oh, we don't have that yet. We'll put that in in a second. So here we can specify what Anne Hero has here and we can say she's got a hundred Say she's got 80 out of 100 and 19 out of 20. Right? No problem. 
Now there are a couple of other things that an hero will need, and that's going to include a public sprite uh, battle portrait. I guess we don't need to specify that it's a battle portrait because it's a battle unit. So and that pops up. There it is. We've just got, got to assign a sprite at the moment. We've only got these default sprites. We'll just choose a check mark. And uh, now what we're going to need is a display half of this uh, situation. So this, uh, this display half will be battle status indicator. And this is something where Unity conflicts with a lot of standard ways of doing things because this battle status indicator class does not conflict with this battle status indicator prefab. And it's up to you whether or not that gives you the heebie-jeebies and you want to name battle status indicator the class something like battle status indicator controller, but that's getting kind of long, so I'll just stick with this. So what do we want from our battle status indicator? Well, we have four things here, and we just want to reference them all. So we have a text, text, I don't see any text. Okay, well that's because you've got to include, you have to do it. Include this. With a namespace in place, we can get texts. So this would be our, um, we can't name it name because gameobject.name already exists and we'd be overlapping on, that would just be bad practice. So we're going to name it name text. We also have a portrait, but that's not a sprite, it's an image. And we're going to have two sliders, which will later on not be sliders. There we go. So we drop the portrait in the portrait, we drop the name in the name, we drop the HP in the HP, and we drop the MP in the MP. And there is one more thing we should do, and that is public battle unit uh, reference. There we are. Fortunately, a lowercase reference is not a reserved word, so we can we can call it that. Here in battle unit, we want to change this because we want to have a battle status indicator. We want to have an active battle status indicator, but we also need to keep track of the prefab that we're going to use. Now, later on, that might change, but for now, that's what we need to do. So we need to have a battle status prefab and battle status. So down here in an hero, we'll just load that up, and then we will drop the battle status indicator in the slot. Oh, it's not taking. Why isn't it taking? Because we forgot to hit apply. There we go. And now we can drop our battle status indicator prefab. Make sure that you drop the prefab in and not the script. Sounds like someone is annoyed at, on, on the street. Um, all right, anyhow, this has been saved, so we can delete it. The question is, what do we want to do with an hero? We want to spawn this battle status indicator and then stick it in this red panel. In order to do that, we do have to know where the red panel is. Now, this is a little bit of a hack that we're going to change out later. So, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. This isn't how you do it for final production. So this would be the uh, battle uh, the party state panel. And so that's where we're going to stick it, the party state panel, right here. So now what we want to do is we want to actually spawn that battle status prefab. So we say battle status equals battle status indicator. And now that, that because we don't actually know, uh, sorry, in, uh, to, to instantiate uh, battle status uh, prefab. There we go. So. Instantiate doesn't actually know what it's returning. We have to tell C Sharp that it's returning battle status indicator. That's why you have to cast battle status indicator here. Um, there might be a way around it, but I've never happened to notice one, so it doesn't doesn't take a lot of effort. We have to put it in the right place, so battle status dot transform dot parent equals party state panel. Now will that end up being correct? No. Now the reason it's busted is because when we put one of these guys into the scene, it doesn't bother to try and keep all of the left, right, and position Y elements that it would normally try and keep. Uh, instead, it defaults all of those to zero, 
and you end up with a mess. So really what we want is we want to set left to, to zero, we want to set position y to zero, we want to set right to zero, um, something like that. Maybe not position y to zero, maybe at position y to 30 or something, well, whatever. Actually, let's go ahead and fix that since, since it's something that I just noticed we'll need to fix. We might as well fix it. Uh, here in this party state indicator, position of zero is like this. So what we need to do is uh, change our anchors. So right now our anchor is at uh, 0.5 here. Sorry, our pivot. Change our pivot. Uh, our pivot is at 0.5. If we change it to zero, look at this position y as we do this. So changing it to zero made our position y go up to negative 71. Changing it to one makes it go to zero. So this pivot is basically what where the zero zero point is uh, on our object. And right now we've put it at 0.5x, which means right in the middle on the x-axis, and one y, which means at the top of the y-axis. And that's going to be making that's going to make our math significantly easier. However, we still need to actually modify that rectangle so that it is in the right spot. As I mentioned, what we need to do is we need to take this object and we need to change these values. And in order to do that, we need to get the rect transform. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to do that at the moment, um, but there is a not so horrible way. We'll do it that way. So that just manually gets the rect transform and allows us to edit it. Now the rect transform has a massive number of uh, um, pieces to it. And the big reason that it's hard to work with in code is because it's so variable. Um, it really does depend on things like where your anchors are, whether you've got a single point anchor or a four point anchor. There's all sorts of complexity built into this and that complexity does get reflected here in the code. Uh, and that is a little bit unfortunate. So I'm going to take you through the basics here. Size delta. This is a vector 2. This vector 2 sets the size of the rect transforms relative to the distance from the anchor. So if we were to print this out, uh, let's go ahead and move this into the battle status indicator. Uh, and the reason we're going to go ahead and move this into the battle status indicator is because there are cases where these don't get initialized uh, until the next frame, and we don't want to accidentally print out something that's not accurate. So we can debug dot log the size delta, and that size delta will tell us something. So if we look over at the console, you can see that we've got negative 843 comma 71. So if we were to click on this, you can see that there is no number like negative 843, but there is a number like 71. And that's because this size is the actual size that we're looking to put into the game. Uh, if we were to subtract right and left from it, or add right and left to each other, um, we would end up with that 843. So that's the width, but it's not the position. We want the position. Well, there is something called rect. Maybe that's our position. Let's try it out and see. So here you can see that our y is negative 71 and our height is 71, neither of which uh, is accurate. So those, that, that rect does not represent what we're trying to get. Actually, it says that that rect is the calculated rectangle in the local space of the transform. I don't know what the local space of the transform means in this case, that the x and width both come out to zero. Uh, I think that a lot of this might be buggy. And if you're looking at this later on, maybe these bugs have been fixed. So offset min and max are things, and if we look at them, the offset min is negative 309 and negative 297. Well, negative 309 is correct, but what's this negative 297? Well, it turns out that uh, what we set the anchor to, or the pivot to, is not actually what matters. Um, so we will be using this, and if we were to set this to zero, then we would get what we might like. So let's go ahead and just do that here. RT dot, uh, is it anchor min? No, offset min, sorry. Um, let's see what we get if we do this. Well, it's in the right x position, some of it. 
Um, but it doesn't have any width attached to it. We're only getting the pieces that don't scale correctly. Well, there's an offset max, so let's go ahead and set that as well. Now the question is, what do we want to set the offset max to? Do we want to set it to 0, 0? Well, yes, we do, um, because the offset max is relative to the various anchors. So what I've just done is I've set our offsets relative to the anchors that we've placed. But you'll notice there's a little bit of misbehaving going on, uh, and that's because I think I screwed up when I set the anchors. So let's go ahead and pull one of these battle status indicators into the party state, and we'll just take a quick look here and see what's going on. Um, HP and MP were the ones that were malfunctioning, and name and portraits were the ones in the right spot. Uh, let's go ahead and make HP and MP. We'll bring these down to um, have the same exact location. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Do it the the same way I was doing it. Let's put bring everything up rather than everything down. So I'm making all of these anchors at, in the top left. Oop. And that should keep anything from happening here. Now, what we're seeing, I would classify it as a bug rather than a feature. But, you know, it's up to you whether what counts as what. Basically, because their anchors are in different places, they are malfunctioning when it comes to actually placing the object. Uh, and that's never great, but you can see that we've gone ahead and we fixed it. Everything is now in the right spot. That did require a lot of annoying work, and you will find that those bugs are still in full force. Um, so when you are building something like this and the things seem to randomly offset themselves, check the anchor positions because you'll find that they are probably not where they should be. Uh, and in this case, where they should be is only required because of the fact that we're booting it up in code and there's some weird thing where it doesn't work quite right. But that said, this is not where we wanted to put this stuff. Come on. There we go. We actually want to put it over here. And the reason for that is quite simple. Um, we're going to be changing the position of this uh, programmatically when we have more than one unit. We'll deal with that a little bit later. There we are. Hmm, this does not actually reflect any of the things it's supposed to reflect though. So let's go ahead and add in a new function in the battle status indicator. No problem, right? So we'll say reference equals unit. And we will say name text dot text equals unit dot name. And we will say portrait dot image. Oh, it's not portrait dot image. What is it? Portrait dot sprite, there it is, equals unit.portrait, and we will say hp.max value equals unit.hpmax, and hp.value equals unit.hp, and then the same for mp. Hit an m there, Craig, geez. And that will do for the moment. Let's go ahead and hit play, see what happens. Oh, it didn't work. Well, duh, I forgot to actually tell it to do that. So we'll go back into battle unit here. We'll say battle status dot set reference this. There we are. And now you can see that they actually properly reflect uh, her, um, her stats until we change them by dragging them around. Now, if you don't want to wait uh, for our better version of these, you can simply disable the drag and drop capabilities um, by turning them off. The downside to that is that you want to tweak the colors because the colors end up quite dull um, since disabled objects are supposed to be downplayed. I'm not going to bother. I think that's fine for us at the moment. And that's it for this episode. We have now made it so that if we were to create another hero, and that's not actually quite it because I wanted to show you this part, if we were to create another hero over here, we'll call this one Bob Hero. Oh, I'm going to save this, the, uh, the scene. So Bob Hero, 
you can see how they overlap. So what we're going to have to do in the long run is make it so that it understands when it needs to move these battle status indicators around uh, and when it doesn't and how to stack them and so on and so forth. But the basic idea should now be fairly clear. An object in the scene says, I have this menu, I know what it is, I know the prefab of this menu, all I need to do is spawn it into the right spot. That's going to be the basic idea for all of this stuff. It's a little bit more complicated than that from time to time. For example, these hero objects, if we do have hero objects like Ann and Bob Hero over here, those hero objects aren't going to be normally responsible for calling their own indicators up. We're going to have a battle system, and we're going to build that in the next episode. Not the whole thing, just the, the basic idea. We're going to build that in the next episode, and it will handle the actual spawning and arranging. See you then.